Hey, 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 everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you are doing well. Brain chips, chip in your brain that might allow you to stream music. Streaming music through the chip that, that, that's going to go like behind your ear, and then there's going to be like some electrodes and stuff that go up to the brain parts up here. We're talking about it. Look, I'm going to be honest. I'm not usually the type of person that likes to come on the internet and be like, oh my God, did you hear what Elon Musk said we're going to do? We're going to implement the technology virtual interface space chip. What? Mostly because uh, Elon Musk has a severe tendency of like announcing that he's going to do things and developing certain technologies and saying things are going to roll out at a certain time or saying, hey, by this time, everyone's going to buy into X or everyone's going to have Y. And then those plans don't really come into fruition or they're super disappointing in some way or uh, the massive buy in that is uh, predicted either by him or the media, just doesn't occur. Now, look, um, that's not to say it's not possible at some point. I mean, obviously, there are uh, tons of investors that every time Elon Musk says something along these lines, they're like, oh, my God, I'm going to throw money at it. Throw money at it. It's a good racket he's running. It's a good racket he's running. Not to be too cynical about it, because, again, uh, one of these ideas could pan out at some point, as long as, you know, he is up there doing his thing, making noise, developing stuff. That chance is always present in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but I, I think it's uh, best to exercise caution and not uh, freak out at the potential of every single thing he says, especially in the offhanded context in which he announces this, because apparently he put out a, a tweet asking if uh, people have... Um, you know, it, it advanced or have solved issues with developing certain types of neurotechnology, which uh, again, Neuralink is a uh, neurotechnology company, uh, send an email, come work for my company, come work for my company that develops this technology specifically. Uh, someone asked if uh, uh, they can listen to music directly uh, from their Neuralink chips. And uh, Elon Musk was just like, yes. Yes, you can. Now, I don't know if this is just him being super sure of himself and just being like, bro, of, of course, like, why not? Or if uh, this is actually an advancement that they've made on humans. I have read that they have made, you know, advancements with uh, other animals and, and that sort of thing. And um, advancements are advancements, I suppose. But uh, I, I do have some questions. I do legitimately have some questions, not all of which have directly to do with music, but I guess here it goes. I'm very curious to understand how exactly uh, a chip can kind of beam a audio recording into your mind and have it play and have it be, I don't know, the same audio quality, the same experience. Not doubting the uh, potential of this coming into existence, but uh, I am very curious about uh, how exactly that technology works. You know, when you listen to a song from the Neuralink or any other kind of neurotechnology source, uh, will it sound exactly like the recording? Will the sensation be the same or different. As long as the brain is interpreting it all the same, does it really matter if there's like, you know, sound waves reverberating into your ear and hitting your eardrum and uh, certain frequencies being delivered physically? And beyond that, I wonder what mass adoption of such technology would do to just music listening on the whole. What would it even do to live performances on the whole? Would it even be required that there be, I don't know, like, a sound system or something at a venue when what can happen is that the uh, sound guy in the venue just like has everybody link into whatever, <laughs> I guess, kind of Bluetooth like technology there is in inside the venue space and then just have everybody, everybody link into that. And then the instruments can just be beamed directly into uh, into your heads. I guess at that point, nobody needs to worry about uh, making too much noise or uh, uh, any uh, noise ordinances or waking up the neighbors, anything like that, uh, making too much of a ruckus when uh, you're just having the sound beamed directly into your head. Would this technology completely phase out headphones? Would it completely phase out speakers?
stickers of any kind or sort? Would we lose touch with the physical sensation of musical sound? Because it's not just an auditory thing. When sound waves are reverberating out of whatever the source is, be it a bass amp or a drum or a PA of some sort, there is a physical sensation to that. And would something be lost in the process of just being like, okay, we're, we're just going to beam this into your head now. Yeah, that's all that's happening. Then past this point, again, I suppose I have a lot of questions and worries in terms of like um, things that are not exactly super music related. Like if music could be directly and instantaneously beamed into your head, what else could be beamed into your head? I mean, for sure, like messages and sounds of other sorts, but would anything be beamed into your head without your consent? Then beyond that, to get more creepy and conspiratorial about it, there's always the track Ability, which of, of course is like also an issue with this. I mean, you don't need to chip people and uh, people are carrying their phones around with them anywhere. But you know, you, if, if you're that desperate, you could always just throw this out the window and run away from it. Not that there aren't other ways to track you besides that, but uh, uh, you're certainly making it easier by putting a chip into your brain. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Those are my questions. Those are my concerns. Again, I don't doubt the potential for such a thing to come come into being, because certainly if this were to be developed in a way where it were uh, very easy to deliver commercially, it could be a super profitable thing. But I do seriously worry about the negative impacts that uh, such direct brain link access could have on various sections of the music industry. I've talked in the past about gatekeeping and uh, playlists and platforms like Spotify and Apple creating a very homogenized experience in terms of like what people are listening to, what's being consumed, what the most popular stuff is. And if people are only listening to music through music streaming services via a chip in their brain, like that is severely, severely going to speed up that process where Spotify is the gatekeeper, Apple Music is the gatekeeper, whatever the most uh, guapped up music streaming service that is out there is the gatekeeper. Let me know what your thoughts on all of this are in the comments down below, of course, and over here next to my head, you can check out another video. Uh, you guys are the best. Love you. Anthony Fantano. Music. Chips in your brain. Forever.